So it has come to my attention that when I talk to people now, whether it be clients or even when I just make videos, it seems like I'm an automation expert or something. And while I don't like to say I'm an expert at anything, more an enthusiast, because I'm so enthused all the time, very enthused. Can you not tell? A portion of this video is automated. Actually, every portion of this video is automated. And what I mean by that is the entire workflow that I have within Notion, Slack, and Google Drive are now automated. And that is because I'm a crazy person and learned how make.com and basic if then logic works. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I managed to automate this process. So for those of you that are unaware, automation is something that has been possible on a myriad of different platforms for a long time. And by long time, I'm using 21st century vernacular, which basically means like, you know, for at least a year. <laughs> no, they've been around for about five-ish years. Zapier has been in the mainstream for at least that long. And then other competitors like Integromat that then became make.com and other applications like Bardeen have also come to the forefront. Now, automations are really, really simple to make if you understand a basic framework. If this happens, then something else will happen. However, in order for you to unlock the power that is automation, you then, at the end of the then output, need to have what I like to call a tracker or a placement property. And that placement property will be inputted into a database. This is why I really like Notion because it's the one I'm most comfortable with. You can technically do this with Google Sheets. However, it really works best with things like Notion and other platforms that are more database oriented from a better you know, UI UX standpoint. So when I first had the idea of creating this video, I thought to myself, if I make a video in the Notion calendar, I want a Google Drive folder to be created. Now, the only way that that could be possible is if this didn't have a Google Drive entity. So you notice here that there's no content editing folder and I actually have an entire secondary item here that is essentially a relation that goes to another database that would essentially bridge the gap between Google Drive and Notion. So every hour on the hour, what ends up happening is that if this gap bridge is empty, there's no content editing folder within here, then what happens is in this automation, it looks for content where the published date is later because you know obviously I'm not making content in the past and then creates a folder if it doesn't already have one and if this is empty. And you'll notice in a moment that this is gonna be created and it is, this literally took 15 seconds. I have this running every hour on the hour. And then from there, if I click content editing folder, it goes right into that editing folder in Google Drive. And then I took a step further in my thinking and said to myself, okay, but if, if I have like a template that I wanna put within that folder for a Premiere Pro file for editing for editors, can I have it automatically do that? And yes, yes I can. This is the templated folder with the same name and number of this Google Drive folder, as well as this content asset. But if I, for example, wanted to change this number, right? There wasn't any sort of module that exists in the automation software that allowed me to search for a file for future videos in Google Drive because the basic data that I need to check for when it comes to dates of content that would be later is stored in Notion. So I needed to bridge the gap with another database that had the folder ID captured in it and the Premiere Pro file captured within it. So now, because that's the case, if I change this to 805, for example, because the number changed because I moved it later in the content calendar. Every couple hours as well, an automation runs which updates all of the folder and project files for content that's later than today. And you'll notice that magically, this gets changed to 805. And even more so, if I were to delete this in Notion, I could have it delete it, the Google Drive folder. This is the kind of stuff that's crazy. This is the kind of stuff that I do on a daily basis when people are like, why do you spend so much time doing automation? Like, shouldn't you just focus on doing work? Yeah, 
This is work. This is work that my editor or me or whoever the heck has to manage all the time. It's like, hey, did you update the folder to be the same as the, the notion? Why would I, who wants to do that? And it's an infinite amount of times that it could be done if my business continues. But instead, by doing it once in an automation and maintaining the same if then logic that you would use in your daily tasks, magically, now once I change this to 803 again, I go here and oh my God, why wow, it's 803. How did that happen? Oh, it automatically updated because I'm on a, on, a, on a roll. Did I stutter like 12 times just now? And the crazy thing about this is I actually had a conundrum as well when I finished making these videos. I had a trick where if I took something like this folder out within here, then it would send a message saying, hey, this video is ready to edit. And then it would link to the folder. But guess what? Guess what? What if I had to re-record? I can't just drag it back in and drag it back out. And do Google Drive knows it's been dragged where it's been dragged. So I was like, oh Jesus, how do I? And then I realized I had an entire task system set up where you'll notice this little video right here, you can automate anything. What happens if I check this bad boy off now? Okay, I'm naturally gonna say that I checked it off, right? Like that's what I should do in my workflow if I'm trying to keep up with my task and to-do list, right? Basic if then logic with a capture in between. The capture of that being now this is checked off. So now since a folder has been made and a task has been checked off, this automation every 30 minutes looks for instances where a task has been checked off for a piece of content, it finds that piece of content ends up editing the status from the fact that it was an idea to editing because I would have done that anyways, and then sends a message to my team saying a new Dimitri Panici video, you can automate anything is ready to edit. Whole purpose of this video is to showcase, I went from recording video to editing video. I went, I went from the whole process of creating content in a calendar, recording it, it going to editing, and then even better than that, when a video is completed in my team, there's an entire system where it sends out an automation showcasing, hey, this video's done, check it out so you can QA it. So from start to finish, I've automated the entire process of nagging people, of checking a box off and messaging somebody, of creating something in a calendar and creating a Google Drive sync of, hey, I gotta move something in the calendar, I gotta change the number. No, that's automated now. And the reason I'm so obsessive about this is because good Lord, <laughs> If it isn't frustrating to do manual busy work that I end up making 65 videos a month, this entire structure is set up for client work, internal work, podcasts. So that being like internal work for YouTube and podcasts, it's updated for all of it. So if I ever need anything to ever happen again in this system where I got to deal with the ridiculousness that is manual busy work, I can find a way to automate it. You start with if something is done by you, then X result happens, capture what that thing is, and then move it along in the process. It's a lot more advanced, obviously, to get into the nitty gritty of how to do it. But if you just understand the basic logic, these kind of things are possible. And what I have noticed is that a lot of people don't know the underlying logic within the platforms, and then they don't realize that automation is useful. And then they're like, why would I pay for Zapier? Why would I pay for Make? Because if I, my video editors, all don't have to do that every month, they spend more time editing, it saves me money, it saves me time and it saves me headache. I love the way that this kind of stuff works. I really hope you guys learn a little bit about how to automate stuff. And although my camera died, I'm grateful for each and every one of you and I'll see you in the next one.